Hello friends, in the last lecture we learned about generation of the amplitude modulated signal. In this lecture we are going to learn about demodulation. So let's start with the mat mathematical formula of the modulated signal. ST is equal to A cos omega t plus XT multiplied by cos omega t. Here the message signal is XT which we want to extract from the modulated signal. And to do so, we use non-linear system because non-linear system gives the square of st. And in square of st, we will get multiplication of a cos omega t multiplied by xt cos omega t. And on simplifying this, we will get a multiplied by xt cos 2 omega t plus a multiplied by xt, the whole term is divided by 2. In this equation, you will see the first term A multiplied by x equals 2 omega t is a high frequency term and the second one is A multiplied by x t is our matches signal with some multiplication, amplitude multiplication. So we want to extract this message signal. We can do this by passing this from low pass filter. So demodulation is done through two process a square law detector and envelope detector a square law detector as the name suggests here the the diode perform squaring of the input signal basically diode works in non-linear region in, as shown in the circuit diagram the input is applied to a square law device and the output of the square law device is passed through low pass filter and and the low and the output of low pass filter give us the message signal the demodulated signal this method this method is used when the voltage level is less than 1 uh, it is because uh, when we when we pass the output of square law device to low pass filter we not only get Mod, we not only get message signal but also get some DC component and this DC component is distortion is this DC component create distortion in the message signal and to minimize that distortion uh, we need voltage of modulated signal less than one so this method is effective when the modulated voltage level is less than one next one is envelope detector in this method the diode work as a switch we we apply the in modulated signal at the input of diode and the output is passed through cr cr filter here when the diode is on the capacitor get charged and when diode is off the capacitor get discharged through the resistor so the output of this circuit is depend on the charging and discharging of the capacitor. So here is the out, output of the envelope detector. In this figure the modulated signal is shown as sine wave with varying amplitude. The actual envelope is the is shown with the red line what we want to detect and what we are detecting is shown is the is shown with the green line here the diode is getting charged when when the diode is on here the capacitor is getting charged when the diode is on and capacitor is getting discharged when diode is off so you can see in the figure when diode is on the capacitor is getting charged to reach the peak of the peak of the sine wave and and after reaching the peak the diode get in switch off mode and capacitor start discharging so the value decrease and we we did not get the actual actual envelope but we get approximate envelope of the modulated signal so we, we detect approximate message signal through this so 
but there is some limitation of envelope detector and this limitation is rc time constant if if that rc time constant is too large then discharging of capacitor will take time and and capacitor will discharge very slowly in that case you will see in the in the above figure that after a certain time when the when the modulated signal amplitude is very low and capacitor is capacitor is discharging relatively relatively more slow then we will not get the actual envelope of the modulated signal but we will get a clipped a clipped envelope and the second is when rc is too small then the discharging of the capacitor will be very fast it is shown in the below figure where the dark black line will show how the discharging of the capacitor is taking place and the and the detected actual and and the output of the envelope detector will be quite distorted than the actual envelope so so we we need the rc time constant a so we need to fix the value of rc time constant that will that will justify our need to to correctly detect the envelope the modulated signal the envelope of the modulated signal so the value of rc should be should be such as given in the last line now here f frequency of carrier signal must be too large from the value of 1 upon rc and frequency of modulating signal should be too small from the value of 1 upon rc in that in that case we will get the correct correct envelope of the modulated signal so let's have a look on the distortion in envelope detector in the books you will find two type of distortion one is diagonal clipping and second one is negative peaking, negative peak clipping, clipping but i will say there are three type of distortion uh, two we already discussed based on rc value the third one is negative peak, peak clipping so book only mentioned the diagonal clipping the case when rc value is too large uh, whose figure whose explanation is given in last slide here uh, the above figure shows when rc value is too large then we will not get actual envelope but some clipping of the envelope and in negative peak in negative peak clipping when modulation index of demodulation is greater than modulation index of modulation then negative peak clipping occurs as uh, the in as we we select only up upper envelope as we detect only upper envelope value of value of voltage greater than zero so the, the negative side of the signal will get clipped off and don't get com confused with the modulation index of am signal here the modulation index of demodulation is what what changes in the amplitude of of the modulated signal is happening at demodulation process is represented by modulation index of demodulation now we completed modulation generation of generation of amplitude modulation and demodulation now let's have a look on power in power efficient amplitude modulation earlier we learned that maximum power eff efficiency of the mo amplitude modulated signal is only 33 percent only 
33%. Our aim is to further improve the power efficiency of modulated signal. 33% is very too low. So modulated signal ST is given by A cos omega T plus XT cos omega T. Here we want to transmit only XT and A cos omega T is the redundant term. We, doesn't, we don't need it. So, so to maximize the power efficiency of amplitude modulated signal, we suppress the A cos omega T term and we get the output of of power efficient modulated signal amplitude modulated signal as xt is equal to xt cos omega t so we transmit only the desired message signal we are we are not transmitting the carrier signal and saving the power which which was which get wasted in transmitting the carrier signal so the power efficient amplitude modulation is of three type double sideband suppressed carrier modulation single sideband suppressed carrier modulation and the third one is vesti vestigial sideband modulation double sideband suppressed carrier modulation it is used to increase the power efficiency from 33% to 100%. In, in normal modulated signal, xt is equal to a plus xt cos omega t. But in double sideband suppressed carrier modulated signal, xt is equal to xt multiplied by cos omega t car carrier frequency. So, in, math, in mathematical term, it's look easy and you can see a product modulator where xt and cos omega t is applied and we get the double sideband suppressed carrier modulated signal and we transmit it through an antenna. But in actual, the circuit diagram is tricky one, not, not like simple, not so simple like this block diagram. So let's have a look on the frequency spectrum of double sideband suppressed carrier modulation. Here on left hand side, on left hand side, the image of normal modulated signal is shown. And on the right hand side, the double sideband suppressed carrier modulation wave shows. And in left hand side, the first one is the up, upper image is message signal which we want to transmit and its, and its frequency spectrum is shown as tri triangle as a triangle and the second image is carrier wave and its corresponding frequency spectrum is shown by a spike at the carrier frequency as only one frequency is present there and the and the third figure is mod for modulated signal. In the left hand side figure, you will find a spike at carrier frequency, which represent pre present of carrier wave in modulated signal. And in left hand side, you will see in, in the modulated wave, there is no spike at carrier frequency. We, as we suppress the carrier frequency, as we suppress the carrier term in double sub sideband suppressed carrier modulation. So we will end our lecture here. In next lecture, we will learn about generation of double sideband suppressed carrier modulation. Thank you.